Allah has asked us to do several things. But Salah is not the first one. He tells us in the Quran what it was ordered for the people before us. Jews and Christians were ordered something. They were not ordered anything more than to worship God without partners, keeping the religion pure for Him, establish the Salat five times a day, and pay the charity, Zakat. And this is the way of Islam, the way that Allah wants you to do it, the way the religion of the Almighty most clear. Make sense? Thanks for a good question. We have another question from the sister section. So, go ahead, sister. State your name and your occupation. My name is Renuka, and I'm a student. Sir, is it okay if we sit and pray uh, without uh, taking any initiative of uh, knowing about the things that are happening around, knowing about the new technologies and stuff like that, without paying any attention to what is happening around it itself? It is only enough if we sit and pray. Is it enough, sir? Sort of like becoming a hermit. You just turn your back, renounce the world, you sit in a cave all day, pray, and you don't think about what's going on in the world today, new technologies, new medicine. You just worship. You guys have this worked out ahead of time, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. What religion are you? Hindu, sir. You're a Hindu. I should have figured out. You said sit and pray. We don't sit and pray. We have to stand up when we do Salah. <laughs> but if you're asking me, is it okay if we like just turn our back on what's going on around us and we just sit there and go like that all day long. Is that what you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, all right. We have the responsibility to worship Allah. But at the same time, a part of the worship of a Muslim is to be a part of the world that Allah put you in. One time, let me give you an example. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he told us about this. A man, he was in the temple. A place to worship. All the time. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. And somebody asked, Who's taking care of this man's family? Who's getting the food? Who's feeding them? They said, His brother. And the answer is, His brother is the one getting the reward for all of his worship. His brother is getting the reward for all of the worship. Why? Allah doesn't need you to do this. But you should stop in the day and remember Him. These are the five prayers. Take about five minutes each. All together you've got, what, 30 minutes invested, 25, 30 minutes out of a day that you invest in your Salah out of 24 hours. Remembering the one who created you, thanking Him, and being obedient to what He told you to do. But the rest of the time, get out there and get to work. Even on Friday, there's a chapter 62 of the Quran. It's called Surah al Juma. Verse 9, 10, and 11. It tells the believers what to do. O oh, believers, when the call for the Juma prayer is made, drop off everything, stop doing business, get out of the tijara, that's doing trading, and get in there and listen to what is being said. But then look what it says. And when it's over, get back to work. This is paraphrasing it, but that's what it says. Go out and seek the bounties of Allah. Yeah. So it's very clear Allah didn't want us to just sit, you know, in a little bubble and say, oh, no. And it won't work for anybody. You have to be a part of the world that you live in. You have to work within it. But you don't let it overtake you. You don't let it get to the point where you worship it instead of him. So that's all part of the test and your question was perfect. Thank you very much. Brother at the male microphone, would you please state your name, your occupation? My name is A.P. Shanmugam, a resident of Chennai. I want to know about the, what is the difference uh, between the Muslims and the non-Muslims okay this is my first question and also one more thing is I know the all the Hindus and you know Christians all the people see they have the some ideals 
and they have some classification in there because of in Hindus you know Lord Shiva and Narayan and so many idols are there. Okay, in Christians also I came to know that the different kinds of idols is there. But in Islam, you know, it's only the Lord, only the great Lord is Muhammad, Lord Prophet. Okay, so I don't think so how and when and where that differences has came uh, from the, you know, uh, that uh, Muslim communities. Because nowadays, you know, in, we, we are reading in a paper, so many, uh, you know, uh, the big, you know, the terrifying, uh, uh, horrible things are coming in the papers. Uh, we are not able to understand why these peoples are uh, making this kind of, you know, that, uh, you know, oh, I don't want to say like this. Because we are very f uh, more fear about uh, all the things, you know, which we are reading in a paper. So I want to know some clarification uh, from your side, sir. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you. I think, first of all, I think your question turned into a paragraph and then it turned into a page, but that's okay. It's all right. The first question, at least we'll deal with that one. What's the difference between a Muslim and a non-Muslim? I gave you the answer a minute ago, but I'll repeat it. The word Islam does not mean a person, a place, or a thing. Hinduism is named for Hindustan. Judaism is named after a tribe called Judah. Christianity is named after Christos, which is Greek for Messiah, a person. Confucianism is named after who? Confucius. Buddhism, named after Buddha. But Islam is not named for anything. It is the noun that's describing the verb, the action. Whoever believes in God, the only God that created the universe, that brought everything into being, who gives you life, who gives you death, who gives you food and gives you breath. If you believe in him and you want to do what he wants you to do to the best of your ability, in Arabic, that's Aslama. That's the action. And whoever does it is a Muslim. Now, it doesn't mean that they're following Muhammad. Because I'm only using the words right now, okay? So theoretically, if somebody is on a desert island, they never met anybody else, they don't know anybody else, all they know is a desert island, two trees, a coconut, and a monkey running around, that's all they know. But they said all of this didn't come about from the monkey, the trees, or the coconuts, something bigger up there, I don't know what, but whatever it is, I say thank you for the coconuts, the trees, and I don't care about the monkey. Huh? So if I knew what he wants me to do, I would do it. He becomes a Muslim. Because it has nothing to do at this stage about the Quran or about Muhammad. Because it's only talking about the condition of the inside of the person. But once he knows, once he has some proof, some evidence, he's obliged, he has a responsibility to act on what he knows. You, sir, could not legally in Islam claim, well, I didn't know, because you don't have the status of the guy that's out here on the island with coconuts, right? You got a brain. You're pretty smart. I can tell by listening to you. And you've understood exactly what I said. Therefore, it becomes your obligation between you and your Lord. Now, if you really are serious, you need to talk to him. Because it's not about you and me. It's not about you and him. It's not about you and anybody in this room. It's not even about you and Muhammad. It's between you and him. And Muhammad was a human and he couldn't guide the people. And Allah told him you can't guide the people. And Allah said you can't force the people. There's no way that you can entice, encourage, coerce, or force anybody into Islam. It's clear in the Quran, La ikraha fadeen. Cut the bayan ar min al gai. So Allah is saying, No way can anybody be forced into Islam. But the clear path is made here, right in front of you now. False worship, whoever rejects that, called tagut in Arabic, 
false worship out of the way, you reject that, and you accept that there's one God and you want to do what he wants you to do, you just grabbed hold of a firm handhold that'll never break. And that will make you a Muslim, at least at the door. You'll have the key. It's up to you now if you want to go in. But to go in, it's going to require a lot more than just some thinking and feelings. Because as you learn, you're going to be asked about what you knew, what you understood. If you understood there's a really a God, it's not a joke.